Hello, Angie Gerber here, and welcome to my podcast, Awareness. Once you know, you can't unknow. A place you can come to start thinking and shifting your thoughts to finally create the results you truly, truly desire. It'll shift your mindset and give you strategies to get out there and get it done. Let's get started. Hello, and welcome to today's podcast. Um, Before we get going as well, I wanted to take a moment and thank you for continuing to show up and listen to the podcast. If this is your first time, welcome. And I just encourage you, if you're liking the content and material, please follow, subscribe, share. Uh, My goal is to reach millions of people with this information because it is truly life-changing thinking into results and everything that goes around it. Uh, It's it's just changed my life. I'm a product of the product and I want to help many, many people. And with that said, I'm going to kind of take it a little bit of a different direction and talk about something that happened in my personal life uh, this week that was, well, kind of, well, it could have been a lot worse than it was, but it was still kind of earth shattering in my world. It kind of rocked rocked my world a little bit in a, a different way. So uh, I live in Minnesota, for those of you who may not know, and we have lately been calling it Minnesota because it snowed so much this past winter. It's been the third snowiest winter on record. So definitely, I think almost 90 inches of snow or something absurd like that. Um, so last about a week and a half ago, we got another eight inches. And <laughs> my husband was out of town fishing in Canada. So it was just my kids and I, and we got that removed. And they looked at me because we did not have plans for spring break. They're like, can we just go to somewhere, Florida or something? And I'm like, you know what? It's not going to be hard to talk me into it now that that just happened. So we decided last minute, like literally within two days, we booked a trip and we headed headed to Florida. And we're really excited about it. They wanted to take the earliest flight possible because they wanted to be able to spend the whole day there. They wanted to do this so much that when we got to our terminal in Minneapolis to head out to Orlando, um, they had overbooked the flight. And they said, all right, $700 a ticket. We need a party of three, which we were, and one more. And they're like, no way. And I was like, what? Okay, you guys don't want to take a later flight. And then they raised it to a 1000. And my kids still weren't budging. And if you know my 14 year old, all, well, you don't, but <laughs> he loves money. He has over, I don't even know how much money in savings, but he does not spend and he just wants to invest and learn everything about money. So I was really surprised he did not budge. Uh, so we ended up boarding the flight, really early flight to get into uh Florida, probably around 10 or 10 o'clock or so. And it was one of those planes, we flew Delta, where you have two, I think two seats or yeah, two seats along the side and like four in the middle. So it was just, I don't know, planes, but it was a big plane. It was packed. It was full, lots and lots and lots of people, as you can imagine, lots of kids. And um, we were probably, again, booked last minute. We weren't towards the way back of the plane, but we were definitely more than halfway back. Um And so as the plane was unloading, I was sitting furthest away from our luggage, our, our, we did carry on. So my 14 year old grabbed his and went. And then my 10 year old, I got hers down and she went and then I got mine down and I went and then I'm like, Oh, crap, I forgot one of those pillows that you put around your neck. And uh, so I'm like, I'll be right back. I got to go grab I forgot something. And so my kids kept going. And I ran back to my seat to get my pillow. And of course, everyone's trying to get off and I'm trying to go against traffic in one lane. <laughs> Didn't go that well. So it, it probably took a good minute or so to get back, get that and get going. And it was one of those ramps when you get off and you go kind of up a ramp and then you turn like 90 degree angle to the left to head out. And I was, I was walking up, my daughter's like, hey, you know, waving at me. And I got up and the flight attendant's like, are you with her? And I said, yeah, she, and she's on the phone. And she's like, all right. She's like, um, and she kind of turns me and she's like, who, who else are you traveling with? And I'm like, um, well, my son, 
and I kind of looked over, and he was standing off the carpet right on the tile floor, kind of right out where you walk out. And I was just kind of, I was kind of confused. I'm like, well, he was in a yellow sweatshirt, and I looked over, and he had it. He took it off, so he was now in his blue T-shirt. I'm like, well, that's him right now there. And I'm just, she's like, okay, well, are you traveling with a, a, a older, like a bigger, a, a man, a bigger man? I said, no, my fourteen. She's like, okay, ma'am. She's and she turned, so now her back was to the crowd, and I was looking at the crowd, and she's like, the man behind my shoulder in the gray sweatshirt, are you with him? I said, no, no, that I'm not with him. She's like, okay, I'm on the phone with the police right now. I called them. He tried to take your daughter. He, because Haley got off the plane, my daughter, my 10-year-old, by herself, because I went back to get a stupid neck pillow. And it, it is real people. There are people that are hired to do this. This happens all the time. And it's not talked about. This man saw my daughter was alone and went up to her and said, sweetheart, come with me. Your mom's over here. Come come with me. She's over here. And I, I can't even imagine what had happened if she would have gone with him. I think because she's very animated. My 10-year-old is 10, and she's probably going on 17, 18 years old. I'm not even kidding you. She's so advanced like that. If she could drive, I'd probably let her. That's how responsible and independent she is. So for her to go off the plane without me, which I felt was like right in front of me, but it was a minute in front of me, to me, it just didn't register as that big, big of a deal. But I'm here to tell you it is. It is a big deal. So if you have kids or if you know people that have kids, just remind them. I, I, I just try to give my kids so much independence. And in doing that, I have to do a better job of picking my times that I do that. Because this gentleman walked up to my daughter. He saw she was alone. She's probably looking around trying to find her brother. And in an instant, he walked up to her acted like he knew her said sweetheart your mom's over here come over here with me and she knew enough to know that I was still coming I mean it wasn't that far off Um, but had that been another child had that been me when I was that age you don't understand you probably do you may understand how chaotic an airport is in the middle of spring break, when more than half the plane, almost all the plane is families and kids and just unloading and just pouring out into the airport. And there's four other planes unloading and there's just so much chaos going on. So the flight attendant goes, he approached your daughter and he tried to get her to come with her, him. And I I saw that it didn't seem right, so I asked her if she was with him, and she said no, she did not know him, and she was not traveling with him. So she, I took her aside. She's here and safe, and I was like, oh, my God. I'm like, oh, my God, thank you so much. She's like, not a problem. It's my job. So my hat's off to Delta. The way your staff looks out for and takes care of, and <laughs> in the videos, they talk about how customers are first and they want to make sure their safety and they're, you know, just feeling good and uh, have a pleasant trip. And on their plane, you know, customer service and satisfaction is everything. I cannot tell you what could have happened. I mean, I I had to call my husband that night and tell him. And he's like, this is what I'm talking about because he's, I'm a little bit more of the free spirit and he's a little bit more, if we had to say conspiracy theorists, I'm not going to go that far. But he definitely is very protective, is always looking out and not going to give much people, you know, many people much of a benefit of doubt. And I'm the opposite. So having to make that call was just really, really difficult. But and then it almost took a little bit for it to register with what happened to my daughter and Haley. So I thanked her, she was calling the police, the guy that she thought was the guy Haley said that wasn't him, he took off. And I was just like, all I wanted to do was get the 
out of that airport. I mean, I just wanted to leave. So I thanked her. And I was like, where's baggage? You know, where do we go? Where? How, how do we get out of here? And she just pointed. And I just took her. I took my son. I'm like, we got to get out of here. And hindsight, I don't know if I should have stayed. I mean, maybe made wait for the police to show up. I don't know. But they didn't ask me to stay. And all I wanted to do is get out of there. And going through the airport, Haley is all since hitting her what could have happened. She's just emotional and crying. And I'm just like, where am I? Like, oh, what, what could have happened? What could have happened? So that night, obviously, I'm, I'm waking up throughout the night just so uneasy what if and I know I don't want to live back there but just looking over at my daughter and I just seen her silhouette in in the dark the shadows of it and it was the same like I saw the same silhouette that I remembered like almost 11 years earlier on the ultrasound and it's just it's just like taking it from in the womb to almost 11 years old and in a blink of a moment that can all be taken away from you and it almost was it can happen to you it almost happened to me and that's why I wanted to share this today because I was just sitting there I'm like okay universe okay I hear you what am I supposed to do with this now I mean I I got you you it it didn't happen this was obviously a wake-up call for me This was obviously, you know, what am I supposed to do with this story now? So the first thing I thought, I was like, well, I'm going to share it here. I Because I I really don't want to keep going back there into that energy all the time to go over and over this unless I need to and it will be helpful for people. Uh, But I definitely just was like, okay, I, I will share this just as a friendly reminder to anyone out there. This happens all the time. These people are professionals. They are paid to do what they almost did to my daughter. And I cannot even imagine what would have happened that I walked off that plane and I could not have found her. It's just, I can't, it just, it's like a bad, like, and then I'm playing it through my head. I'm like, this is like one of those Lifetime movies or something where it's like, you're all really excited going on a trip. Oh, forgot this. Got to run back to my seat. And then you get off the plane and you're all of a sudden like, where's Haley? Haley. And then you start screaming. And then this mom's going frantically screaming in the airport and her daughter's gone. And that could have been me. It's not talked about as much as it should be. It's not highlighted. So I wanted to bring it to light because it does happen. It almost happened to me. So please take what happened to me if you're the type of mom that I am. I'm not a helicopter mom. If you are good for you, whatever type of mom you are, you do you. I love it. You do what you got to do. Because again, we're all doing the very best we can with the tools and the resources and what we know as of today. And I'm going to tell you after that incident, I'm stepping it up a lot because I might be too trusting. And, you know, and I'm, it's so weird because it's like, I can't even imagine I'm driving because I don't trust other drivers. (laughs) You know, it's there and it's not. But when you're so focused on excitement and what's coming and going on vacation and you just kind of maybe lose perspective or I don't know maybe it's just me I've I've actually been pretty hard on myself about the whole situation because I just and then I thought what would have I done and I wasn't as strong and I wasn't as smart I don't I, I wasn't as um I don't know. I just wasn't how my daughter is right now. She's amazing. She's independent. She's sassy. <laughs> she's she's just she's my my little buddy, my little shadow. And I um yeah, I don't know. So I know I'm going on and on, but I just wanted to really bring this to light and talk about it somewhere. And I thought, what better place than to start here and at least just give a reminder out to everyone out there listening whether you're a mom or a dad, aunt, uncle, grandparent, you have friends that travel or friends that have kids, 
it's not the same world that we grew up in. And I almost learned that the really, really hard way. It's so different than me growing up in the 80s and being a teenager in the 90s. I mean, in graduating, you know, 95 from high school, it is a different world. And, you know, as much as I want to go back and, and show my kids what we had and, you know, what they don't have versus you know, or what I didn't have that they have now, it's it's just it's it's not how it was before. And just give them hugs, hold them tight because they're still there and you can and have the conversation and make sure. And I think that's another reason why is because my husband, Bill, definitely did a really, he's done a very good job of instilling in them what to do if someone comes up and he talked with her on the phone for quite a while that night, you know, after that happened. And he obviously couldn't sleep for a night or two because he's just like, I cannot even imagine and, you know, feeling like I wasn't there to protect her. And it just, it could have gone so sideways and it didn't. So that's why I'm going on and on here because I just, if this can help one person, one child, just be a little bit more aware or know what to do, know to scream, know to kick, know to just do whatever, if anyone ever were to do that to them. Um, there are people out there that are hired to try to take your children from you. It's a real thing. I knew it was a real thing. I just didn't really think it would ever happen or is like that's on the shows or that's on that newscast or that's in that that website or that podcast. You know, you it's all it it, it it's there. It happens. So just be aware, stranger danger as we talked about when I was little and um pass along to someone that might be able to use it. So thank you all and have a good one. Thanks for spending some time with me today. And if you like what you heard, feel free to share, like, subscribe, follow, do whatever it is you do. I'd love to get this out to as many people as possible because it truly all does start with awareness. Once you know, you cannot unknow, and it changes everything. And of course, if I can help in any way, I'm here and happy to do so. Until next time, make it a good one.